It is regarded as poor programming practice to directly access global variables from within a function. This video is going to outline some of the reasons as to why this is the case. An ideal aim in designing a function is to ensure that it has one task that works on one input parameter to produce one return value. It is okay for a function to access local variables. However, an important guiding principle of function design is that a function should not directly access global variables. If a function's mechanics, i.e. its program statements, requires direct access to a global variable, it makes the function's reuse in other projects more difficult. When working on a software system designed for implementation by functions, i.e. not object-oriented design, it is usual to define functions in modules. This means you can import modules when designing future software systems and use the functions previously developed. An ideal aim is to have a function have one task, and when we call this function, we want to pass it an input parameter. We want the function then to work with this input parameter to produce an appropriate return value. Now that's the aim. Now there are other varieties of functions. You might have more than one input parameter. You might have more than one return value. But the key is we try to achieve this. And this means that when we want to look at the function, we can quite clearly see, oh, I and see what that function is doing. It's doing one thing, it's taking one input parameter, and it's giving me a return value. And in truth, once I finish the function, all I want to know about it is what its name is, a good descriptive name, what it takes in as an input parameter, and what it returns. So long as that function is thoroughly tested, I don't really care how it's been implemented in sign. So long as it's efficient enough, I'm quite happy to use it. Software developers would not be happy, however, if somebody said, look, I've got a function to do what you're trying to do. This is the name of the function. It takes an input parameter and it's got a return value. And oh, by the way, if you want to reuse this, I should tell you that it also accesses a global variable. Now, no, we don't want this to be the case. What we want is a clear cut function. One that has a name that's descriptive for the one task we would like all functions to have, to take an input parameter and have a return value. I would not want my function over complicated by the fact if I wanted to reuse it, I would have to declare a global variable and that global variable would have to be accessible to the code inside the function. It doesn't really help me say, well, I'm just going to grab hold of that function, plug it into my code by importing its module. I'd have to say, oh, what, what is the name of the global variable it uses to start with? So it's not good design to actually have your functions accessing global variables directly. Producing a good design for a software system is not an easy task. And sometimes, and I repeat, sometimes, when you're approaching a deadline, you've got your software almost working, and you can see there is an issue where it occasionally will not perform its functionality correctly. And under these circumstances, you see a quick fix where you can say, oh, if I give that function access to this global variable, it'll work. And I'll fix the design on the next release of the software because you could be chasing a deadline. Now, if that's the case, we need to be clear what the drawbacks are of using global variables within Python. Consider the following computer program. Here you can see we have a definition of a function and here we have two program statements. The first program statement here sets variable one to the value of two. Variable one is the global variable. 
when I now go onto this line it calls this function and we can see that we print variable 1 and of course we're printing the global variable so the output from the program should be 2 as we can see here. Now consider this computer program here it's more or less the same as the one we've been looking at but here what you can see I've decided to assign 55 to variable 1 and that represents the fact that I want to process in some way what many might now believe to be the global variable variable 1 and of course when I run the program I'm going to get the 55 out however if you'd have followed the previous two videos in the playlist you would have noticed that this here is not the global variable this is the local variable because it's been defined within the function so this is a mistake people often make they will say oh I'm going to process the global variable inside here and in fact that's not the global variable that's the local variable so when you see this that's called variable 1 and this is called variable 1 but you have to think of this as being global variable 1 and this here as being local variable 1 let's move this up and let's have a look at this computer program here now what I've introduced here is on this line you can see I'm asking to print the ID of variable 1 and on this line I'm asking to print the ID of variable 1 and when I run this program what we're going to get out is the following so let's see line by line why I have this output this is the first line to execute variable 1 is assigned to and if you remember everything in Python is an object so variable 1 is in fact an object and it has the value of 2 but as it is an object it also has an ID so on this line we're going to print the ID of variable 1 and you can see that we get this value here now I go to this line which calls this function and on this line variable 1 is assigned 55 and then I print the ID of variable 1 and you can see it is this number now if you compare these two you can see they are different so this confirms the fact that this variable and this variable are indeed not the same thing this is the global variable and this is the local variable and of course this is the last line to execute and it gets 55 now if I were now to print here what this variable was it would be 2 because the function has had no effect on this variable here it's a different variable to this one now to us as a human being they're the same names now in reality we wouldn't give them the same names would we we choose something more sensible in fact we choose something more sensible than variable 1 as well but the key here is if you look to the printing of the ID of variable 1 in this position and in this position you can see you get different numbers confirming the fact that these two variables are indeed different so this is a mistake that you can easily make in Python you can believe that when you say variable 1 is 55 here you may be thinking that you're accessing this variable here the global one when in fact you're not you're creating another variable as an aside for a moment consider this particular computer program here and let's ask the question what do you think the output from this one will be well let's have a look at the first line it's saying my variable is assigned my variable plus one and then we're going to print my variable now at first sight you may say well it's going to print my variable one bigger than it currently is but the question is what is it currently well let's have a look at what the runtime gives us it gives us this and if we look here it says name error name my variable is not defined now when you look to this first line here what Python will do it will attempt to evaluate this 
and of course this is the first time it's come across my variable so it's not defined so if you attempt to add one to something that's not defined then you're going to get this error here now the way to correct this is shown in this program here you simply say my variable equals zero so now my variable is defined so when you come onto this line my variable plus one is going to be the zero which is the current defined value of my variable plus one to give one and that's then going to be assigned to my variable so my variable now stores one so in other words you've incremented the value of my variable and then you print my variable and you would expect the output to be one and if we look we can see indeed that's what we get we get one from this program let's just quickly look at what we've done we looked at this program initially and this line we're printing variable one and when we see the output we can see we're printing two so in fact we've actually printed the value of this variable so what this line has printed the value of the global variable so it looks like the function can gain access to the global variable if we now have a look at this line what we've done here we've said let variable one equal 55 and when we print that we get 55 so this looks like we've changed the global variable from 2 to 55 but if we move this up and now introduce these ID printing statements when we run it we can see we get two different numbers here and that's because these two variables are different so in fact this line did not change this global variable to 55 let's just move this computer program out of the way and let's have a look at this computer program here and you can see I've removed the printing of the IDs but what I have also done I've introduced this line of code instead of this one here and what I want to do now is to ask have a look at this new program and ask the question what do you think the output will be now pause the video at this point if you want to have a go at this yourself but I'll show you what the output is now we get this we get an error and the reason we get an error it's shown here look it's saying unbound local error local variable variable one reference before assignment now what does that mean well let's have a look at this line here it's similar to what we saw a moment ago what I'm attempting to do here is to take variable one and add one to it now you may say but oh variable one's two look it's two down here it's the global variable but in fact this is not the global variable what we've done on this line we've introduced a local variable called variable one consequently the program crashes because it thinks it is incrementing a local variable that's not yet been defined now let's be clear here the function should not be designed to access global variables but what I'm going to do now I'm going to show you that if you must access a global variable and remember it's not regarded as good programming design to have direct access to global variables inside a function by the program statements that define the algorithm of the function I'm nevertheless going to show you how you can change this program here to one that will allow you to access this global variable this is the program here now all I've done I've added this line here where I've said global and then I followed that by variable one and what that is saying it's saying please do not create a local variable called variable one use the global one which we can see down here has been assigned to so when this program executes variable one is assigned to this calls the function this says use the global variable so on this line this value here is going to be two we're then going to add one to it to give three three is then going to be assigned to this variable 
which is the variable that's the global one and then we're going to print the global variable and if it works we should have the output of 3 which we can see here let's now consider this computer program it's almost identical to the one we've just been looking at but we have the addition of this line where I'm going to be printing the ID of variable 1 and this line where I'm also going to be printing the ID of variable 1 now when the program executes we get this and we should see that this line here has been responsible for outputting this ID and when we call the function this line has been responsible for outputting this ID and if you look at these two numbers you can see they're the same which means that this variable and this variable are the same so we've allowed the function to have access to the global variable and of course on this line here when we print variable 1 we can see it prints 3 now the question I want to leave you with is what would happen if I was to print here variable 1 what would we expect to see at the output well the answer is you would expect it to be 3 because you've changed the global variable here and it will be reflected back here now that in itself is not a good idea remember because you should not be mucking around with global variables inside a function my advice avoid accessing global variables directly from code inside a function have functions access its parameters and have local variables help the function perform its task with these parameters if for the logic of your function its mechanics ie its program statements needs access to global data then pass this data to the function as an input parameter so in other words if you definitely want your function to have access to a global variable then pass the data that that global variable stores into the function via a parameter that will allow your function to be more readily moved to future projects because the user of the function will know by looking at the input parameters what it has to supply to that particular function check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the youtube channel and the google plus circle that relates to these videos in addition why not follow me on twitter as i issue a tweet every time i upload a new video